Uh, anyway, so today um, I have a, I have a few videos that I want to look through. They're mostly Street Fighter V and mostly characters that I care about. Okay, that's probably going to happen a lot. Dalsim and Zangief. But if I have time towards the end, it's just my lunch break. If I have time towards the end, I want to look at the new uh, Black Canary and, uh, and stuff like that in, in Injustice footage. I got, I can, I believe in my own, my own planability. I believe in it. I believe in it too much. Uh, anyway, so the first one, so I see Mochi Dalsum versus uh, Usai, uh, Usai Ukami, two, two of the best players in Japan. Mochi has been, you know, one of, or the best Dalsums in the world for, I don't know, probably seven or eight years now in Street Fighter 4 and in Street Fighter 5. So, uh, uh. I, I want to watch him because he has a different style than many American Dalsims do. Even, not just Americans, but I, I feel like he has his, a very unique style to himself. So I want to watch his approach to Kami. And then there's a few Zangief matches in there, right? There's Itazan, uh, something else. I kind of forget what it is, but uh, I, there's a whole playlist that we'll go through. So anyway, let's let's get let's get going. Thanks again to my sponsors and donators on the old left in there. Uh, all right, so I'm keeping the the little mouse up here so I can point at stuff. But <laughs> what? Uh, I haven't watched this in advance. Uh, let me just. Wow, what a start! What a gutsy start! How many gales? So, okay, if the way that you're going to beat Kami... Oh, that sucks. And he didn't even get the reset afterward. But if that's his idea of playing against Kami, then that, that really is quite different than how a lot of people deal with it. It's not... Look! Wow, that movement was sick. Saved it, I guess. I mean, I sometimes people just spend it there. Yeah, sometimes people just spend it there because she gets to find enough setup in the corner. But dang, Mochi, okay! Uh, I hope he takes this, man. That'd be that was sick. Very different start. I mean, you can't. How how often can you start with Gale like that, right? But yeah, look at this guy going in. Tried the anti air against dive kick, even that is not easy. I'm definitely gonna have to take another look at this after we watch this round, or however long this this uh, video is. Nice. Probably supposed to have been DP, I guess, rather than drill. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Mochi will take that. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say you gotta respect that on block, so he just gets out of there. What? Oh, okay. Very smart. He's very buttonsy, huh? Yo, why would he do it? Oh no, I don't like it at all. Uh, well, I guess we'll, we'll wait for the final round before I before I get some replays in here because there's some things that I really want to point out after having watched this. But he's very buttonsy. He's very active. That's actually not the style of his that I expected. I expected it to be a little bit more staid, but not at all. Uh, well, what can you do? I guess. Man, is he gonna get perfect? Ooh, that that hurt me to watch. Okay, okay. Quadruple Gale. Yeah, the blocking, of course. That was that was good patience by Usayu. And now without without that trigger, I don't know. How do you make this comeback? Yeah, you gotta make some major guesses. Dang. I think there's more in this. Yeah, there's there's another one, but. Um, before that happens, I just want to go back. So this the start. The start was very interesting. Cause look look at the hitbox on Gale, right? So she starts off, I guess, with hooligan. Yeah, with hooligan dive kick, or is that regular jump dive kick? Oh, that's hooligan. Very unusual start by both players. But you can see how big the hitbox is on Gale, as well as the hurtbox on on uh, dive kick. So that start is not as crazy as it seems, because if, you know, common starts for Kami are like jump toward, or walk toward, or, uh, uh, you know, something to sort of like counter hit a uh, counter poke against the button, and Gale will actually work against all that stuff. 
uh, and be safe, or even plus on block depending on when it when it actually connects. Uh, so it's not it's not that weird of an opening to be honest. What what gets funky? Okay, one, two, three. Then of course you don't block. It's too bad that he doesn't hit the the follow up combo here, but uh, I really like this. So in season two, here's how I'm viewing characters who have Drago punches. I feel like uh, it's almost like fighting against Chun Li in Third Strike. Remember how? Well, maybe not. But uh, if you if you didn't play that game, fighting against Chun Li in Third Strike in round one was very different than round two or three. Because round two or three, she definitely had bar. She definitely had super, and so you had to respect buttons into super, which is very damaging. Corner from anywhere on screen, extremely strong option. But before she had that, she really wasn't that damaging, and she had good buttons, but like not super scary because it didn't lead to a bunch of damage or, or setups, uh, typically. In Season 2 of Street Fighter V, Round 1, <clears throat> nobody has meter. So if, when you get a knockdown, you don't have to respect people. You can go in in, in exactly this kind of way. Uh, and, and uh, you know, Round 2, Round 3... Almost always they're gonna have meter, so you have to be a little bit, you know, more judicious about it. You gotta, you have to be uh, a little bit more respectful, I guess. But at the start, man, especially if you get a string like Mochi did here, I feel like you really need to keep it up. And and uh, I think that's something that is the case for everybody. Like I don't think that's even character specific. I feel like everybody should uh, want to go in because all the characters in this game have offense. Even Dalsim has offense. You know what I mean? So. Uh, that's, I think, a really good recognition by, by Mochi. Um, again, sucks he doesn't get the follow-up combo. Not that big a deal, whatever. He, you know, he takes the round. But then there were also some other big risks, right? I think it comes up right here. He throws a fireball. Look at this fireball. If she had not jumped, that could have been a free reaction, right? That could be free EX drill. So very risky to throw fireballs in neutral in this matchup because Kami can just drill underneath and... And at the worst, tag Sim from really far away. And uh, and at best, you know, get the knockdown because it's drill. She's right next to you as you wake up. So risky to throw a fireball, but there you go. I mean, it's, that's what can you say? That's the right call. And she even just tried it right after that. And, you know, I don't know if I can be too critical about not doing the uh, the follow of Vichika right there. Like, he didn't expect that he would run into Stan Jab, I'm sure, but... That, that, uh, the stand jab, that's the beginning of very active defense. Like, very interrupt heavy, you know? That's why I really like the, the V reversal usage from Osayu, recognizing that stuff and just getting on through it, you know? Psh, look at this movement from Mochi, what a nut! So, yeah, at, at, that, at that point, just to go back a little bit here, once she has trigger, the match, is, the match has to be quite different, I think, from Dalsam's perspective. Yeah, so, like, at this point, you really can't uh, teleport effectively, uh, uh, just because of drill, you know, drill is so strong, uh, v, v trigger drill, and... Even if you teleport backwards in this situation, which he does, like the drill will still be there. Um, so, I, well, okay, it was drag a bunch, but you get the point. But now she doesn't have meter, right? So, so whereas in season one, this this fierce is like a little bit of a risk. It's not whatever, not that big of a deal, right? But it's a little bit of a risk. Now, if she doesn't have bar, you know, put some great damage on her, right? Why not? What are, you, what are you gonna do that's better than that, right? I mean, you, I guess you can go in, but it's like one of those two options. That was nuts, though. Yeah, that's just, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna win all those interactions. Final round. Fight. Yeah, I don't think this round was as interesting. I think this is more of a blow up. So. I'm not, I'm not in this for the Cami. I'm not in this to watch Cami. Cami does what she'll do. Ooh, God 
that, that's so, like, that's so tough to watch. Even though nothing happened, it's just still... That's, that's so good. So when you're, when you're in that kind of a situation, if you're a mochi here... Uh, you have to make very, very sure that, uh, you don't press buttons that are too viewer versatile. I, I feel, I feel like that's a big part of ensuring a comeback is, you know, keeping your options, uh, uh, safe against the opponent's, uh, escape, escape options. And in Season 2, like I've been saying, that's not really Dragon Punch, right? It's not really what you're worried about. Uh, even viewer reversals are, are slowed down, but... Still, you gotta you gotta keep an eye on that. So I, I really like how Osayu just got out of there. Recognized the opportunity, escaped. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Poor, uh, poor old Henry Wallace. Could have been president of the U.S. Very, very close to not being. <laughs> Basically, just a few votes at the convention. Anyway, thanks to him for being my sponsor, I claim. Oh, yeah, good. Oh, that was not actually instant air teleport. I gotta think that was an accident. That was such a crazy... S Talk about that slide in a second when we, when we go back through this, but that's such an interesting slide timing. Like, he's, he, stays at, he stays at an unusual spot, I would say, against Kami. It's certainly not where I feel comfortable playing, but he's way better than me. Really? Oh, that was a good drill. What? Wow, and you press the button even after that. Dude, I, I love I love the offense. Yeah, I mean why not? You established that so well. The grab right there was legit. He didn't get a crush? What do you do? Okay, well it's, you gotta take this. Like you can't not Yeah, okay. Okay, so there's one more game, but I wanna I wanna go back to <laughs> Yeah. Just set this from the start here of this game. So I, I mentioned I mentioned the spacing. That's that's what I want to watch out for in particular. Uh, this in in this game, a lot of uh, Sims matches he he wants to and kind of can fight at like stand medium kick range. Like that's like you would rather be there because you feel like you're in a little bit more control. Uh, that's your best horizontal tool. That and stand stand medium punch. Uh, you can't really throw horizontal fireballs in this game unless you want to spend bar. So. Uh, your your horizontal space control is is like that. Even if in fact, even if you're in the air, even if you're doing uh, V skill floats, like that's still about the same range, maybe a tiny bit closer, but like about the same range. V skill float into jab, fierce roundhouse, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, but Mochi does not spend much time there at all, and that might be this particular matchup, uh, which is is hard to keep her out. You know, so it might be that he's like looking for a, an alternate strategy, but. We very rarely saw this range. Even voluntarily. Wow, she, I can't believe she tried to jump. So, well, like I said, that was just a screw up. You, I'm sure, wanted instant air teleport, not just regular ground teleport. But yeah, that, that was the slide that I was so impressed by. So the reason the slide here is if you're looking for another slide, because if if not, uh, you know, crouching medium kick, that slide, that's not a, like a safe option. That's not like a good tool. Uh, in fact, they made it worse in some ways in season two. The, uh, the hurt box is actually worse than it was before. I think it's like more easily hit. You know what I mean? Like you can't, you can't get underneath things quite as bit, uh, uh, quite as easily. It is a little bit safer. I think it's like one frame safer which makes it like a little bit nicer but uh still it's not like a safe tool necessarily so the reason to do that slide is if you think that she's not going to be standing there even if, if she had like imagine she dashes toward instead of doing dive kick. okay 
So if she had dashed toward, then that is definitely not a great option. Um, that means that Sim is, I just looked it up, it's, he's minus two on hit now, uh, which is cool. Um, but that still means he's minus two in Cammy's face. And you, you don't, you don't want to be there. That's not, that's not good. That's not like a, it's not the worst situation ever, but especially without her having meter, but still, you don't want to be there. So he's, he's definitely taking a risk. But you have to do that as Sim. You know, you have to be, uh, it's, he's not an easy character to play. I don't, I'm not saying I think he's terrible, but I, he's just... You have to make so many right choices. So much of the time. Oh, I'm sure, he was looking for a jump there for sure. That was just supposed to be regular Anvil. If, if it was supposed to be regular Anvil, he's a genius. Wake up, Gale. So, wake up, Gale is something that sim players do when they're expecting a grab. Um... You know, Dalsum doesn't really have, like, the the throw tech, jump back throw tech OS. It's not really, like, a thing for him, because he just starts moving up backwards, and he's caught in the air for a, a second, or however long that takes. So, rather than doing that, as Dalsum, you can actually do the same uh, sort of idea. You can actually do Gale. So, I guess it's throw tech option select Gale. Yeah. So, if the opponent doesn't throw you, then you'll have jumped in the air, and you'll do the Gale instead. So... That's that's like a, a pretty common tool, um, but of course, if there's any kind of a you know meaty or like a slight delay on a on an attack from the opponent, then it's your ass. Uh, it is it's safe on block though, so I mean it's actually not that bad of an option for a character who's totally assed out on defense in this game, especially once he's in the corner. You gotta have you gotta have something. That's what that's what sims do. Uh, how do you beat that OS? Uh, you just stick a button into him. You know? I mean... Uh, uh, the way the way that you beat any jump back throw tech OS is... is Or this uh, as well. Is a slight delay. Like, uh, as, as you're... As you're pressing your, your meaty button. Don't have it be like a true... They wake up and they are, it's into them meaty attack. Alright, that's what a meaty attack is. is they have to wake up into it. Instead, do what is called a delayed meaty. People don't like that term, because if it's a delay, then it's not meaty. Right? I get it. But um, but that is a way to deal with it, is to stick a button into them, like, just a f frame or two later. Uh, and then as they're trying to hold up back, or in this case, up toward for Gale, uh, then you will hit them. You know? So that's a, that's a big way to do it. You can also, uh, if you have some kind of a crush counter... Uh, then you have a nice tool for it, like as Zangief, just as an example, right? If you expect somebody to do jump back throw tech OS or this Gale OS, just press stand run OS. Because as they are jumping back, they're pressing a button. And as, you know, as the uh, as the guy with the meaty, you can crush counter that button. So if you have some kind of crush counter that causes a juggle, then, you know, you can you can do that. Right? Remember what I, what I said about the very first round, how it's not uncommon for Kami to start with some kind of forward moving option? So, it's the same exact thing here. That's, that's what Mochi's looking for. He totally has the call. Sets up Gale stuff. Oh, yeah, that's such... Well, I mean, look, that punish could have been... Could've been better, buddy, but it ends up working out fine. But yeah, I like the I like the pressure he has. I like the movement. You know, it's it's risky, but you know that's I feel like you have to kind of play like that. And at least in this matchup, you know, as many as many matchup advantages as I feel like Cami has in this, in terms of her mobility and how she can get in and kind of control things. It is nice, at least, for Dalsum's sake, and I guess for everybody's, really, that she doesn't have much life, right? She can't really absorb hits uh, or stun. And Dalsum, finally, in Street Fighter V, he can actually put out the hits, you know, he can actually be damaging. That was not an ideal punish that we saw from Mr. Mochi, but uh, the character is, is definitely more uh, viable when it comes to 
Ooh, when it comes to pressuring or uh, punishing, than he almost ever has been. That's not. Oh, was that safe? Really? Wow. Interesting. I don't think I've seen a cameo end with that. I'm gonna go back after this and, and check out that meaty situation because that seems like an interesting tool. Let her toast a little bit. Oh! Oh yeah! Sick! Look at this guy. Does she universal on a jab? Is that... Did that work? Wow! That was his ass if that got blocked. Jump back jab when you're in the corner? Yikes. Round two. Fight! Mm. Oh wow, he chose not to even go for the combo. That's dude. I don't I don't know what to make of Mochi's game. I mean he's clearly really really strong. But he just has such unconventional decision making. Good movement. Oh I've screwed up the Gale. Good block. Ah. Oh, oh that's such a good you can punish that so easily as Gammy, but okay. Yeah, just make sure you get out of there. He's done that so many times, that, that Meaty Fierce. And finally, got the hit. Um, so let's go back. I want to see in, the, I think it was the first round of that last game, that Cammy combo into EX Hooligan or something. Maybe it was before this. Hey! Yeah, okay, must have been. Yeah? Was it before that even? I guess. Ooh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, okay, so, I mean, he, he did a dash toward there, which implies to me that he thinks that he gets free meaty with dash. That's cool. Is that more damage than... What else could he have done? Couldn't, can't you just do... Drill into Dragon Punch nowadays? I don't know. I'm no cami player. Anyway. Man, so Mochi has a really interesting and very uh, risky game, but I mean, you can see you can see the benefits of it. Like he's he's very he's very smart, you know. The the opening gambits, the the pressure, not being worried, I think, is a very important part of playing Dalsum. Like I, I feel like you have to have such a unique mindset to play the character. You can't be worried about getting hit by individual things, even though that can be. You know, that can really lose around for you is if you get hit by one thing into a snowball effect. But you can't get worried because that is such a commonplace occurrence that you just have to be okay with it. You have to you have to think calmly. You have to be okay with taking those little risks. Uh, and he's and he's really, really good at that. Uh, and like I said, in this in this game at least Sim gets better payoff. Um, I, I heard that in season one, Mochi thought that Sim was not bottom five i thought i heard that he was that he thought that dalsim was was mid-tier uh everybody else i have talked with or heard from thought that sim was near the bottom of the pack i certainly did i still think he probably is i guess we'll see but if he can if he can make the style work consistently then i i get why he feels maybe a little bit differently Oh, but he'll punch. No, those sponsors don't have any connecting thread. Other than just that I've been, like, reading about them and stuff lately. Just was on my mind. All right, let's go. Anyway. So, Itazan versus Tokido Akuma. I gotta tell you, I think this is not an easy matchup for Akuma. I've been playing Akuma uh, to just to try to like sort of figure out 
his options and understand his neutral game better. I don't really care about learning the offensive side of him. I feel like other people will do that well enough. I just want to understand, you know, how he sort of makes things happen. Or, or to what extent he can make things happen. Because I feel like that is kind of a problem for him in some matchups. And in this matchup, I feel it's particularly tough. I just think that Geef has has strong defensive tools. Strong neutral game tools against Akuma. I feel like it's harder for Akuma to get in on Geef than it is for Geef to get in on Akuma. And I feel like it's harder for Akuma to keep Geef out than it is for Geef to keep Akuma out. Which is kind of sort of the, the reverse of how it's been in, in previous games. Um, I just I just don't think that, you know, Akuma's fireball game is that is that credible. Um, I don't think it's that scary. I don't think his buttons are that great. I think he has a couple of good options, but they're not fantastic options. And when he gets a knockdown, um, you know, I don't I don't feel that he is some crazy snowball type character, uh, at least not from what I have seen yet. That is to say, I don't think that he is like a Laura who who can end around in three mix ups or like a Mika. Or a lot of characters can do that. It's not just those even. There's there's quite a few. And I, I don't really feel like that's as practical for Akuma. If you find some big stuff as Akuma, certainly then like you can you can get the damage going. But how easy is it in practical terms to land a forward fierce? You know, 25, 30 frames startup, whatever it is, it's so slow. I feel like it's just asking to get V skilled by Zangief. You know, I, I just I feel like that's not not easily done. And some of the cool cross-ups and shenanigans that Akuma does, they're solved easily by Lariat. So, I don't know. big part of why I want to watch this is that I have a ton of respect for Tokido, of course. And, and I want to see what he does against uh, Itasan, who is the world's best Geef at the moment. So, let's see if he has any cool ideas. I, I, it's funny, I feel like I'm, I'm watching this more from the Akuma's perspective, trying to figure out, like, what does Akuma do in this matchup? than I am from Zangief's perspective, because I feel like I already kind of know what it is that Geef wants to do. Uh, Geef, I think, can can kind of just play, you know, slowly and patiently, and the occasional jump in is going to do a lot of damage on Akuma, even if it's just, like, medium kick into Stan Shore Lariat. Uh, uh, trading a forward fierce into something is is big time compared to Akuma. Uh, lariating through fireballs, or lari lariating through uh, potential air approaches, whether it's jump fireball or jump dive kick or whatever uh, all that stuff loses to to lariat so as geef i kind of get it already not so much as akuma so uh, i really want to see what it is that tokido does so ford fierce is a uh, uh, yeah fierce then ford fierce so fierce I, th I feel like is one of the buttons that is you know it, it it's like pretty good for akuma i don't think it's fantastic but i, th I think it's pretty good You know, I'm. Well, I guess I won't pause it yet. I'll I'll wait through the little playthrough. But so far, uh, I don't. Other than just playing very patiently, which is good, probably what you're supposed to do as Tokido. I don't really feel like he is making things happen. That is to say, I feel like the damage that Itazan has taken is mostly self-inflicted. Jumping in, pressing buttons when he doesn't really need to. That was pretty cool. Instant air overhead. It's pretty cool. Oh, sick. Yeah, he's caught. For sure. That was really good. But again, I feel like that's a self-inflicted wound on Itazan's side. Like, he didn't need to get hit. You know, he didn't need to start a, a Charge Fierce. The reason to do Charge Fierce is because you're expecting a Fireball, so you want to armor through it, but there's some risks. Nice. The punish. Uh, okay. Wow, just like that, that life lead is gone. And now it's on Tokido to try to make this comeback. So, I mean, having seen him play in the last round, I can I can see him playing patiently for the next 30 seconds, but I guess we'll see if that's what he does. Oh, oh that was so V-triggerable. Is this V-triggerable? Oh, nice. Okay, good. It's kind of a scramble.
final round. Fight. I don't even feel like he passed the jump punch in this matchup. I feel like his buttons do great. I feel like he has legit ways to deal with fireballs. You know, I don't feel like he needs to take the risks. Uh. Oh man, he just let it rock. He has parry, but I don't know, maybe he just doesn't want to take the risk on the timing. That might be it, actually. Because if you don't, if you script the timing, then you're going to get crushed, and then you're dead as a boomer. Ooh! Yeah, that, so that's what I like about the Far Fierce. Nice. That's so much on the... Uh. They, they buffed it. They made EX Bear Grab do more damage. So now, again, I feel like it's a very similar situation. Yeah, okay. He does this. He did that last round. Oh! I mean, I get the I get the intention on Tokido's side. You're hoping that the opponent does do V trigger and that you do jump attack and you hit it. A lot of things do hit it, but not at that angle. Um, yeah, I mean, think like think about to think back to how he got damage, Tokido. I feel like he got anti airs. I feel like he, you know, he did a bunch of damage at once with the super through the charged spheres. I just feel like a lot of the damage that Itazan took, he didn't really need to take, and he won the game anyway. Fight. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, he could have could have gotten Larry there as well. There's no meter on Akuma's side, so this kid, this is bad news. Oh, yeah, just very very patient, some great damage, and then hanging out. So crouching medium pick a lot. That's oh dang the timing though. What, is it, what does he do? I don't know. <laughs> Just hope that Itazan runs into one of those crouching medium kicks or a fierce or something. I don't know. That he jumps. Itazan is taking those risks and yet uh, coming out on top damage wise. Oh, this this can be a lot though. Yeah. He has demon. You jumped, right? Oh, are you serious? Man. I don't know about that. I feel like that was pretty clear. <laughs> but that, that was a big risk. I guess, fine, you gotta take a risk to make damage happen. But it's not gonna be too... Oh, wow. That's a lot. That is a lot! So I feel like a big part of playing Akuma is that you have to confirm Fierce into Ford Fierce, and that's not easy to do. That's really not. Yeah, you can't do that, man. Even if that had been jump fireball, that would have been the same result. I really feel like Eve can just hang out. He doesn't need to jump. Oh, the V skill, please. The, the startup of that forward fierce, I just feel like it's so telegraphed. It's like the, there's nothing else that it could be. Oh yeah, wow. He, yeah, you gotta make it safe. You don't wanna test Tokido on that kind of thing, that's for sure. And now I feel like this is a wall. Like, I don't know what it is Tokido does. Really? Okay, you're the best. You are the best. Okay, we got another another one or two here. Actually, no. Let's let's go back. I wanna I wanna see that crouching medium pick again. Was that? Yeah, he just he walked into that range. I wanted to see like where that was. If Geef had walked forward, yeah, he walked in. He hadn't done that, so I mean, all right, good good work to Tokido. He had been playing at range and like almost not at all walking into Geef's range. Into a range where Crouching Medium Kick would like actively hit Geef. He'd just been hoping that Geef would walk into it. 
He's done it a couple of times, but for the most part, he had been just holding his ground. So that was really good. I can understand that working, have, uh, you know, having sort of thought about it more. You really gotta think about that when you're playing footsies, right? Like, should... Oh, yeah, he went for it? Oh, or tried to confirm, maybe. I don't know. Uh, you, you really gotta think, like, do you want to hold your ground? Or do you want to go in? Because those are, those are different things, you know, different timings and spacings in footsies. Oi! Oh man, that could have been big. Oi! Oh, are you serious? You didn't get EX Air SPD? Oh, it could all melt. It could all melt. Two more mix ups, maybe three? Oh yeah, that was sick actually. EX all? Yeah, one mix up, either way. Oi! Oh man. Oh, he's jumping so much. Yeah, no, no, no. Come on, buddy. Now I'm, now I'm doing Geef side. <laughs> but that was well played by Tokido. I like the offense when he had the chance for it. It wasn't really risky forward fear stuff. It was, it was lighter than that, which is good. But, but oh, yeah, crashing fears. Yep. Keep it up. Yes. So what, once you have trigger, I feel like I would be worried as Geef because I know that there's so much damage potential. Oh, okay. So this is definitely a time where as Geef I'd be playing more patiently. Not anymore though. Oh, that's it. Yeah, you got to get that confirmed. Probably just save bar. It's it's really important to. I feel like as this game goes on. Very important to be able to hit confirm into your trigger rather than just like doing it. So as Geef, first our roundhouse, you know, you gotta confirm that into trigger. It can't just be that you do it. Yeah. Oh, that was really good patience though. Ooh, oh, you gotta get the counter bow. Dang, that was... Oh, it was so late on the Lariat, I'm surprised. Oh, he just did it. Oh, that's it. Oh, yo, I had enough time to say that's it. <laughs> and he didn't, he didn't do it in time. You gotta save that bar. Really? Oh, man, I don't know. Hey. Oh, my God, all the meters. That's it. Good stuff, Tokido. I feel like he got away with some things. But I do like how he I do like how he played. You know, I felt like he had good button timings, good spacing. Yeah, that's it. Um, his his offense was not as sort of predictable as many of the Akumas that I've seen. Not just predictable, reactable is probably a better term. Uh, yeah, I thought that was good. Ford Fierce is like you get cool stuff links out of it, damage and whatnot, but it's just so seeable. Uh, and he didn't really go for that, so I thought that was. Nicely done. Good good footsies for sure. Uh, thinking back over Itazan, I do feel like he had a lot of unforced errors. I feel like he didn't need to jump as much as he did. I feel like he didn't need to charge fierce as much as he did, you know, get hit by things. Um, I feel like he could have played that better. But I you know, I get it. You're done you're Zangief, you wanna you wanna get in there. You wanna do Zangief stuff. I, I certainly understand that. What do we got next? Another Super Bowl commercial? Cool. That's gonna be all over YouTube, man, over the next few weeks. Yeah, okay, okay. Itazan, again, against Kazunoko. Kami. So, this is a matchup that in Season 1, I felt like Kami had a slight advantage in. Uh, and I talked with some Kami players, they felt about the same, you know. Um, uh, I remember Alex Meyer saying that he felt like he would never lose to Stupendous. Um, <laughs> I think that did happen, though. But, uh, I mean, that, I think he lost, but uh, I don't think he lost that much. In any case, uh, I felt like Cammy just sort of had the advantage in a lot of situations. I felt like her neutral game was solid enough. She had good enough pressure. Um, you know, even against Geef, right? People are worried about V-Skill wake-up as Geef. 
And and it's good because it's armored instantly. You can wake up with it. But the recovery of it is such that uh, he can't just like V skill and then pile driver, right? Like he has to V skill and then recover, or V skill and then like get the little hit afterward. And and neither one of those is that easy to actually get in practice. And I also feel like higher level players will do do a media attack and then see that you're doing the V skill, right? And then press a couple more buttons to break your armor. Um, that happened to me very consistently uh, against people who I thought were stronger players. So it's and and Cami, I think the reason I bring this up, Cami is particularly good at that uh, with with light series and with the you know how fast strongs come out. Uh, I think she's particularly good at that stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so I thought that her pressure worked out well, but I feel like the difference in this in season two, the reason I think it's a little bit more even. Uh, I would say it's about even so far. You know, we'll see how feelings change but I, so far i feel like it's about even is is that uh i'm not as worried about cammy doing wake up dragon punch especially in the first round right as geef if i get a knockdown i feel like i can play games very well uh and not really be too concerned about that uh her her dive kicks are a little bit worse so sure her, her pressure is a little bit worse um you know that said uh she, she's so strong she is still so strong i feel like her her pressure in some ways is better like when she's already in the fact that uh, she has uh, better access to the to the target chain and to you know strongs are even more frame advantage and <clears throat> better combos in the corner. Like I feel like she has plenty of things going for her still. So uh, even though she's a bit worse in some ways, Geef is a bit better in some in some ways. I feel like Geef's buffs in season two are are mostly about other characters not being as strong or about sort of game engine things rather than his own buffs, but, you know, he did get a couple in there, so uh, mostly mostly in buttons. Anyway, I feel like it's pretty even, but let's, we'll see how it, how it actually pans out here. Itazan versus Kazunoko. You, you, have to, you have to establish jump, you know, and establish. I'm sure these guys have played each other a billion times. So, talking about establishment, I don't know if that's so important now, but... You have to let the opponent know that you're willing to jump, and I think probably people do know that about Itazan. Because he's never been shy about that. Yes, oh, that was so good. I'd save the bar. Oh, he did spend it, okay. I usually just save it unless I think there's a better chance coming down the pipeline. Uh, oh, good. And now Cosmonoko's just looking for anti-air, you can see. Oh yeah, so the ground works instead? Dang, that was good though. Yeah, you can really see when people are starting to look at the anti-air game. Uh, maybe two... No, yeah, this, this is good. You see, you see him back off? See, you see the spots? He's not pressing buttons. He's not even crouching, really. He's just like, literally looking for the anti-air. But, uh, no, he, he recovered very well. And played that ground game better. That was good. Round two. Fight. So that key forward medium kick. Oh, nice. You can't always press buttons out of it. And that's something I see each on do. It's something I do as well. Uh, forward medium kick and just block. Because it causes people to make poor decisions a lot of the time. If they're trying to react to it. Which a lot of people are. Understandably. Dang, Fortress of Geef? Oh man, that movement's so good. Yeah. You might as well, you have Super on deck. Oh! I'm kind of surprised that there are so few V skills there. Wow, that jump actually worked? Ripes. Ah, uh, oh, no, not quite. Probably trying to confirm. Just miss the confirm. You know, it's understandable. Final round. Fight. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. After you've after you've done forward medium kick into nothing a couple of times, 
Forward medium kick into something, it definitely works more. Yes. Oh? That was such a sick punish? Wow. Okay. That was really good. Probably about as good as it could have gotten in that situation. So this is somebody who's definitely looking for the anti-air right now. Wow, and he didn't do it. Good patience from Itazan. That was really nice, actually. So you, you see this range that Kami's trying to pick? Kazunoko's trying to play? This is a range that is outside of Geef's buttons where he... Kazunoko hopes that he can whip punish. He also hopes that he can convince Itazan to jump, which he just did. Because oh, Itazan really wants to hit that Fierce of that Ranos and get into, into Trigger. Into Super, maybe. And uh, this range that Kazunoko has picked is really good to, to deal with that. What? Oh, I really thought that that was going to be EX Pile Driver in the air. I'm surprised that that was not what he did. Oh, no, it's just a ad right in the middle there. Oh, um, let's see. Griffin says, what types of jump timing should be used if you're trying to jump when your opponent isn't expecting it? I feel like mine are too predictable. Yeah, I mean, for sure, one of the biggest parts about playing Street Fighter or really any like more grounded 2D game is, is about when to jump and when to play the ground game. Uh, it's hard for humans to concentrate on both the ground game and the anti-air game. Like, that's just not easy to do, you know, to, to look very consistently for, for counter-poking, for, for playing an active footsie game, a very buttonsy grounded game. Or not, not even very buttonsy, but to focus very intently on what's going on on the ground, when the opponent is going to press buttons, and where, where they're standing, where, sh where should you move, should you move forward, should you move backwards, should you press a button right now, or in a half a second. Uh, that takes con mental concentration, and when that's happening, as a player, you know you're gonna, not going to be as good about anti-airing because that's just not what you're looking at. Whereas if you're looking at the air, you're not going to be as good about dealing with the ground um, for exactly the same reason. Uh, uh, it's just difficult mentally to, to concentrate well enough on both, uh, and so that's like really. One of the one of the most basic one of the mo one of the biggest sort of fundamental things to get about a, a grounded two D fighting game is that sort of understanding of when somebody is looking for the ground and when they're looking for the air, and and there are kind of tells, you know, if somebody is not pressing buttons very often, uh, if they're mostly standing up, you know, if uh, well, I guess this is kind of character specific, but if they're not doing things that are actively about controlling the ground, then they're probably looking for you to jump. Um, and if they're standing at particular ranges, like, let's see if I can go back here. Yeah, there was this whole long sequence where Kazunoko was looking for the anti-air. And you can see how often he presses buttons. Yeah, it basically starts here. So, so look at this, look at this range that he's consistently keeping. That's not a range where Kami can attack from on the ground, right? She's not gonna. What is? It? She has nothing that will hit from that range, so she's not focusing on the ground. That's not the point. The point is not to attack Zangief on the ground right now. That's what Kami's position on screen is is telling you. Uh, and so, okay, there are two other options, right? Is she going to focus on the air, or is she going to focus on whiff punishing, right? Not active footsies, but more like reactive defensive footsies. Even that, she's not really at a range where she can whiff punish. If Geef presses a stand roundhouse from here, stand fierce even, I think that actually comes up. She's she's too far away to to get like a like a reasonable punish out of it to like really dissuade Geef from doing this. Um, this is this is a tell that what Kazunoko is looking for is the jump. Itazan's jump. Uh, I think he. I think he brings in the jabs at some point too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so an another big tell when somebody is focusing on the anti-air game, but they don't want you to think they are, is that they'll start 
like whiffing something meaningless, you know? Jabs don't mean anything in that situation. A jab is not going to attack Geef. It's not going to whiff punish Geef's buttons. Uh, it's If it happens to hit a Geef button, it's not doesn't matter. It's like 30 damage. Who cares? It really doesn't mean that much. Um, what what that is instead is Kazunoko trying to convince Itazan that, oh, Kazunoko's playing the ground game. Yeah, don't, you know what? I'm looking at the ground for sure. You can jump because I'm not paying attention to that right now. Uh, it's like a, it's like trying to convince the opponent, you know, that you're doing something that you're not really, you're not really. You can be mashing jab and, and not really be paying attention to the ground. It's just what he's doing. Yeah, it was really good. So, I mean, so, somebody at, at Kazunoko's level is not going to be myopically focused on the ground or the anti-air. Uh, instead, there's going to be a constant switch back and forth. It's not going to be, you know, exclusively one or the other. But as, as you're learning how to deal with, with opponents, um, it's important to figure out which one they're looking for at any one time. And when you're not playing somebody at Kazunoko's level, chances are that they are looking for one more than the other. Um... And so you can kind of like figure that out. So if you are, uh, if you're if you're looking about if you're sort of thinking why people are anti-airing you, or or why it is that your jumps don't seem surprising. Well, uh, it may be because you're trying to jump too much. It, it may be because you you have given the opponents the information that they don't need to focus on the ground game. They can focus on the anti air, and and even at, you know, sort of mid level, even even lower level gameplay, if your if you know your opponent is just gonna jump, then you can get the anti air every time, right? Or or a lot of the time, because uh, you don't need to focus on the other half of the game. So I would say the biggest thing in establishing the ability to jump is establishing the ability to play the ground game, because one really opens up the other. They really go hand in hand. It's very difficult to play a, a grounded 2D fighter like Street Fighter V is without having that, you know, without being able to establish both. Because if you don't establish both, you don't really have either one. It's like if, if you sort of get the American football context of having the running game and the ground game, if you only have one, uh, then unless you have like the best players, you know, which is totally, which has definitely been the case in the past, I guess, but... In, in sort of a typical team context, if you only have one, then you don't really have either one, you know? Because if you have a credible run game, then that opens up your your throw, your sort of passing game, right? Because people have to play against you differently defensively. And same thing, vice versa. So it, think about fighting games in, in that context. Ground game can open up the, uh, the jump game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Labrutus says, your jump timing became better when you stopped jumping and focused on ground and anti-air. Jump started coming back into my gameplay naturally. That sounds about right. Yeah. If you can if you can really focus on the ground game, then your jumping game will become better. Um, and one, one way to do that is to just say, I'm not going to jump this game. I'm just going to go the entire game without jumping. Maybe I'll lose, but it's like a way to teach yourself how to play that grounded game. And then, as sort of a byproduct of that, you'll develop a better jumping game. One of the reasons that Kami is dangerous too, and that I still feel like she's a top tier character, is that she can switch so quickly between controlling the ground and approaching from the air and anti-airing. Like, you saw that just at the sort of last 15 seconds or so here. This is this is definitely, she's looking for the anti-air. That range is a, is a big tell. Right, in fact, another big tell is you see it sort of down toward, you see this, you see this little bit of crouches in, in here? That's Kazunoko buffering for Dragon Punch just in case, and then it comes out. Um, but she can all of a sudden, yeah, all of a sudden she's in there, right? So quickly. Uh, and Itazan, if think about this from the reverse, if Itazan had, uh, if he was the one playing defense right now, uh, and he and he was in sort of Cami's position, 
he was in Kazunoko's position. Uh, that EX dive kick might have been V-Skilled, or might have been Armor Fierce, uh, because that's what he's looking for. Right? He's looking for the approach, uh, if that were the situation. Um, and and if if he's looking for the approach, then you can then he can better react to the approach, right? But because he is looking so desperately to get in, it's very hard to both look to get in and also look for the opponent's ability to get in, like simultaneously. You only got so many mental faculties, all right, as a human being. You only got so many, and you got to like apportion them out, and it's hard to do all at the same time. So Cami, I think part of why she's so strong is that she can threaten from about the same range with uh, with anti-air, with the ability to get in. Walk up crouching medium kick is so sudden, you know, to play footsies again. Uh, and and that, that mix is very difficult to deal with. Round one. Fight. Yeah, she is pretty good. So, uh, before we watch more of this round, I just want to talk about uh, confirming crouching medium kick as Kami into drill. It's not easy, right? But very important to play in that character. If you can, like, watch K-Brad play, because he's so good at this. Uh, think about all the times when he does stand fierce or crouching medium kick and turns it into dive kick and into pressure. And think about if he hadn't turned it into dive kick. Think about if he had just pressed fierce or, or crouching medium kick. And think about how different his rounds would go if he had some, I don't know how, what the percentage is, some significant percentage of his knockdowns are from his footsie confirms into drill. You know, some significant amount, right? I don't know what the percentage is, but it's, it's up there. Uh, if he didn't have that, he's missing out on damage, on positioning, on pressure. Maybe he gets hit instead. You know, he's sort of, don't, don't just think about the, the active payoff, but think about like the, the potential cost. Right, maybe if he presses a fierce but not into drill, maybe half a second later the opponent gets a sweep or something, right? Whatever it is, and knocks him down. Now he's on the back foot. Uh, very easily, uh, uh, could, could very easily happen, you know, that kind of swing. So the fact that he has that so consistently is a huge, huge addition to his game. But the reason I want to bring it up is because it's not easy to do, and because rather than confirming the actual hit, oftentimes you're confirming the situation. You're confirming whether you've seen the opponent standing up a lot. Right, so Fight. let's see. Notice how Itazan will sometimes just crouch, and he doesn't even necessarily press the button, but he just crouches. Oh, okay. Ends up getting hit there, but it happened just before that. Yeah. See, he crouched, then pressed jab, crouched again. You know. Um, ultimately gets hit, but uh, when you're playing against somebody who really wants to confirm something like crouching medium kick, it's so important to mix up whether you're standing or crouching. And that might sound obvious, but it's not as simple as it sounds, because you have to consider it like a like another footsie tool, right? So rather than just bringing out buttons constantly, you have to be mixing up your standing or crouching position, because that makes it tougher for the for the cami player to confirm crouching medium kick into, into drill. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's not easy, you know, but, um, you really have to think about it like that. So, I mean, congrats to Kazunoko for being able to confirm it anyway, but we did, keep in mind, see him, and I think the first game uh, that we watched here, when, when he had Drill set this match, I think it was, yeah, earlier, um, when he had, uh, a v trigger Drill and he did crouch and medium punch, then walk back crouch and medium kick into drill, and he did it. He did the drill, even though it was on block. And I think part of that is because Itazan does mix up whether he's standing or crouching a lot. So. Oh, hey, thanks for the subscription. I really appreciate that. That's really nice of you. Uh, I think that might be my first... I think it might be my first subscription. Because I just started this. But now I'm going to look. Just to completely interrupt everything. Yep. Nice work. Thank you. 
I don't I don't have any like stream production value yet. I'll, I'll work on that. I'll get some going. Anyway, let's watch let's watch video games. I wonder why he would approach like that. Huh. Oh yeah, he, wow, he was worried. That's pretty unfortunate for Itazan, he gave up that opportunity. Dang, he was so patient, that man was like a rock. Okay. Yo! What? I looked away for like half a second. I don't even know what happened. Oh, he tried the, the cute stuff. Come on, buddy. I don't think instant overhead even works on Cami. Wow, okay. Footsie tool. Yeah, let's... I don't even know what happened here. What went wrong? Got it. Oh, she flipped. She flipped. I see, I see, I see. Okay. That makes sense. Wait, remember how I... I feel like I just was talking about this. V-Skill is not that free in this matchup because the opponent can react to your V-Skill and then do button-button and... and... eat it up. But he just timed it perfectly if Itazan did it. Sick. Yeah, I feel like that's instant overhead that he was going for, but I'm pretty sure it does not work against Kami. After back throw it does? Oh, really? I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, I use I use UV trigger like that too, just to whip punish things. It's fast once you have it activated. Back throw and running bear grab in the corner. I did not realize. Cool man. Thank you. Hey. Now, okay, that that crashing medium kick into drill worked. Let's look at what Itazan was doing the previous 5-10 seconds. Okay. He's walking, he's walking. Yeah, you see that? He was just walking. Because, okay, to go back just a little bit farther, he, he was inputting crouch here and there. He blocked that one, he blocked that one. He puts Crouch a couple more times, and then all of a sudden he's walking, he's walking. And Cosmo Knuckle saw it. God, that's so good. That's so good. That's so good. I think he just wanted Crush Counter. Oh, yeah? Sweet. Crouching, one crouching jab into the lariat would have worked there. Ah, uh, come on, man. Oh well, okay, it worked. Spend the bar? He seems to always do it. Oh, hey, man. Oh, dang! Is that it? Wow. <laughs> okay, and then it just... For no reason, Crouching Medium Kick into the Lariat. Is that it? No, we got a couple more here. That was good, though. Really? I should have vetted this beforehand. Uh, by the way, thanks to everybody who uploads their videos and lets me watch. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, different people have different ways of dealing with how they confirm. Some people, as you guys are talking about, uh, yeah, I should just have a bad block on. I don't know. I don't. I don't usually keep it on just for niceness's sake, but uh, I definitely have it. Maybe I should just put it on when I'm, when I'm doing this. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so some people look at stun bar to try to confirm that you know if something gets the hit rather than seeing the actual animation of the of the hit. Some people look for the animation. Some people listen, some people are trying to hear it, that's easier for them. 
uh, and you just gotta kind of figure out what's easiest for, for yourself. Some people look at super meter, you know. I, I, for me, I just look at the at the animations because I I have always found that that's the easiest. But yeah, you know, it's, you can do you do your own thing. Oh, okay. There was a battle there too. Itazan was pressing buttons. I'm sorry, uh, Kazunoko was. Man, Kazunoko's so good. That was so quick that he went from looking for the anti-air into all of a sudden he's right in Itazan's face. That's, that happened so quickly. That's not just Kami, that's, that's also Itazan. I'm sorry, that's also Kazunoko. I keep screwing up the names. Hey! Oh, I thought he would be looking for that. Oh, good stuff. He just buffered that. That was not a confirm. But that was the right range to do it. Man, you remember when I was talking about this? This exact same thing? What if it was Kami who needed to get in rather than Zangief? I bet that EX dive kick gets V skilled. Well, it did. Because as Itazan in that situation, you own and then he did the jump in, which is exactly what Kami did. You have to know what people are looking for in situations. That was a sick little counter book. You got to know that. And and what you have to pay attention to hugely informs how effective you're going to be at doing it. If you have to pay attention to a lot of things, then you're not going to be that great at doing any particular one of them. It's not that easy. But if you only have to pay attention to, as Itazan was, uh, the approach from Kami, then you can V-Skill more easily, you can get a jump in yourself more easily. He even had the Fierce there, I mean, it was not the right spot or timing, but it, it was, he had it, you know, he was looking for the jump in. Oh, really? That was gutsy. Yo, oh, really? Did it again? Wow. I do the same thing as Itazan was trying to do. When I see people whip a dive kick or a jump in, I do SPD, of course. Yeah, grab them there. But Kazunoko took the risk. He, that's so... It's keeping your eye on, on all the balls. That was the last second block too. I'm, I'm impressed that Kazunoko did not pull the trigger on the drill. Oi, oh. Oh, dang. Okay, he's just not doing it now. Right? He's just not, yeah. Because Itazan has been good enough about blocking things that Kazunoko now is not convinced that he can uh, react. So good stuff to Itazan for, for basically taking that away. That isn't, that's, that is not just Kazunoko not getting the reaction, it's Itazan actively working to make that reaction harder. Oh, oh, I'm sure she could have drilled. Oh man, he jumped in! Damn! Oh, dude, those fierces are so sick. He's getting pretty, pretty active, Itazan is, all of a sudden. EX, oh, well, of course, super. If you got super, then that's even better. Ah, this is not probably practically doable. Yeah, you, I mean, you might as well. Yeah, just, I mean, I get it. In that kind of situation, you know you have no time. You just gotta hope that the opponent kind of screws up, but... Kazunoko did not screw up. All right, what do we got next? Oh. This is definitely taking up more time than I had expected. I don't know why I didn't expect it. But, uh, I guess I'm not gonna get to injustice today. So this is now Tokido Akuma. Again, I mentioned I've been playing Akuma and I really wanna understand his neutral game better. And it'll be against Punko, who I haven't seen play SF5 uh, in season two yet. So I'm looking forward to seeing this. 
I, I haven't seen him play Urien at all. You know, in season one, his cami was good. I mean, he did well at some majors. But, you know, it wasn't sort of up there with how his Seth was in uh, Street Fighter 4. Um, I just didn't feel like the game played to his strengths as well. But I do feel like season two plays more to his strengths, uh, and and I and I can see him making Akuma work. You know, I feel like he's one of the people who I can, I can imagine making the character work out. Uh, I feel like you have to have almost a grappler mentality with Akuma. That's part of why I've been playing him actually. And you know, I've seen Snake Eyes play him. I think that kind of makes sense because because he does, he's sort of a forward moving Shoto. He's not like a zoning Shoto. Uh, at least that's how it seems to me. You know, when when we saw Tokido earlier, he was definitely playing the mid range game. So I, we'll see how it turns out. But um, I, I like that for Punko as a result. I think that's kind of cool. So far, Jeff uh, Guess Us asks, "How do you feel? How do you think Akuma fares in season two? I feel like he is not that great. I feel like he's mid tier. You know, I don't know if he's even mid tier. I feel like he might might be lower mid. It, obviously, it's early. You know, um, and." Uh, the Capcom Pro Tour hasn't even started yet, so we'll, we'll see. But um, I just I feel like his neutral game is not as strong as I would have expected. And I feel like he's geared so heavily towards offense, and yet his offense is not as strong as like a Miko or a Laura. You know, it's not it's not quite that level of damage output in stun, uh, in typical situations anyway. So I don't know. So little life too. You really can't make that many mistakes. You don't think Tokido would bother him if he w with him if he was just mid. Yeah, you might be right. Certainly, historically, Tokido has picked strong characters. That said, in Ultra, Street Fighter IV, Tokido talked about how he was playing Akuma in that version, even though he did not believe that Akuma was still top tier in that version. Uh, I think ultimately that was probably not true. I think he probably still was really good, but he wasn't good in the same way as he was earlier in Street Fighter IV's life. He had to play a different, more grounded style. And, and he said that that was tough for him, and he had to figure it out. But he wanted to figure it out, and he did. I mean, he ended up being very, very strong. So I feel like that this might be sort of the carryover of that new Tokido, you know, that he's just going to play his dude. More details about the grappler mentality. Well, uh, the grappler mentality, I feel, is being willing to take risks on the way in more than you would be with other characters. Because you know that once you get in, that's the payoff. Um, you know, you think of your life bar as being like cash that you're willing to spend in order to get the payoff of being close. And once you're close, your mix-ups are good enough and they, and they are damaging enough that uh, you expect to win the round, even though you've lost life in the process uh, of, of getting up close. So I feel like that's the mentality that you have to have to play a grappler well. And, and so far, I feel like you have to have that mentality with Akuma, too. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't have very much life. You know, he has 200 and whatever less than Geef. Uh, what is it, 225? I think he has 875, if I recall correctly. Um, so, uh, you know, having that mentality might be helpful, but uh, you can't get hit. So, I don't know. We will see. We will see. Uh, the world, though, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you're being serious, but uh, just because you can't EXDP with Akuma against people who neutral jump doesn't mean that the game is bad. It's just a design choice. Who cares? Why does that matter? And yes, it definitely is weird that Geef cannot cancel flex into V-Trigger when he's already in V-Trigger. I don't know why that is. That was one of the things that I was really hoping for in Season 2, but they didn't do it. Uh, You know what? Actually, let me take a quick break. I need to get some water. I'll be back in just a quick second. Let me just put this on the old break. Break time. Be back soon. All right. So let's uh let's check out this match. Um 
I guess I was talking about Punko playing Akuma well, but uh, I, I like... I like the idea of him on Urien a lot. I like the idea of everybody on Urien. Urien is strong enough in enough ways that I feel like like every he's everybody's style. You know, he just has so many things. Do you want to play offense? Yeah. Do you want to do setup stuff? There you go. Do you want to take risks? You can do that. Do you want to be safe? You can also do that. Like... I just feel like he has so many things. Oh man, he's such a good character. Anyway, let's uh, let's watch how he plays. Very different style, clearly from Tokido than when he was playing against Geef, right? You can already see it. Because he doesn't need to worry about a lot of things. There's no Lariat to stop him. There's no B skill to stop him. Yeah, that's plus on block. You gotta respect that crouching medium kick. Oh, oh man, that could have been so big for Urian. And of course, he was pressing buttons afterward. He gets crushed. Really? That wasn't a bait? Just He just walked back to super turbo <laughs> fireball DP range, apparently. Oh, oh, that's your triggers. Oh, he got that. Dang, that was just a run around. He had everything going for himself. Punko, look, like Punko, uh, I feel like he can be so strong. Like he has, there's like this potential Punko somewhere up there that is so, so strong. He just doesn't want to play like that most of the time. Like, have you ever known somebody like that who you think, wow, they could be like awesome if they just, you know, took it seriously or did X or Y rather than A and B. But they just like doing A and B. They just don't like doing X or Y. I feel like that's Punko. That he he has shown that he has such good footsies if he if he wants to play like that. He has such good patience if he wants to play like that. And yet he just doesn't play like that. Uh, haha, <laughs> say jam, you did the same thing today? That's funny. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, not on, not on purpose, but shout outs to us. Like, why, like, why the roundhouse, you know? And I even feel like, well, I'll go, I'll go back later, but I feel like that was just him doing stuff and it worked out as well. I don't know why he... Just, just hang out, dude. He exits at some point. Oh yeah, fierce? Okay. There it is. Ooh! That was such good spacing, though! I really like his patience right now. I think he's played the last 10 to 20 seconds really, really well. Oh, oh boy. Oh, that was good. Just like a kind of no nonsense way to deal with that. Is that it? Seal the deal here. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's go back a little bit because. <laughs> Just like watch most of this round again. So, once he settled down a little bit, that w that's what I was talking about. Okay. This dude definitely just did knees. He was just like, yeah, it's knees time. Knees, he's just doing it, for sure. But it worked out, so shout out to him. But then after that, I felt like he really settled it down a little bit and played like a solid Urian game. Solid buttons, good spacing and timing on the fireballs. Stand Fierce is canceled, well, why not? excellent spacing there you know hopping over i just feel like he he was like all right fine like dash back roundhouse for whatever reason isn't gonna work out okay Let's play a little bit differently then and i really like that way that he ended up playing the, the more mid-range control game oh yeah that button is so good Crouching medium kick is so good. 
I feel like that's one of the best buttons in the game. In fact, I feel like if you were to count up the best buttons in the game, how many do you think Yuri would have out of the top 10? I feel like he would have like that, more than his fair share. That is for sure. For sure. Very strong character. Oh, look at this range that all of a sudden Funko plays. I, I really like that. You know, oh yeah? Is that there in time? Sick. That was, really, that was like the end of the spacing too. But like as, as Punko, I don't think that you can be worried too much about that. Like an individual hit's less important than controlling over time. Especially against a character like Akuma. Oh wow, he thought that was gonna get through. I do really like how Tokido plays this though. Oh yeah, buttons? Oh man. Oh, is he trying to confirm Crouching Minion Pick? Can he do that? If you can do that, then you're ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he was looking for the jump? Oh! Trigger Super! Oh, he just got it! Oh, dang. Alright, alright. That was good. That was good. So, remember all this talk that we were talking about, uh, paying attention to the air versus the ground and how that really affects, for example, that Itazan versus Kazunoko matchup. Um, think about all the ground control that we have been seeing out of Kunko, right? It, that whole, that last round I talked about how he had a lot of good ground stuff. This time he starts off very, very buttonsy on the ground, not jumping, not being a wild man, just like kind of controlling stuff there. Not getting every hit, obviously, but like the goal of him is, well, of his play is to control. Even though he gets hit here, the goal is clearly to control, right? And so, uh, Tokido sees that. So, that's why that jump worked out. That jump fierce. Because I was thinking to myself, why, why would that jump forward work out? Like, he doesn't have... I don't know, he's not like a particularly great jumping character. He has good buttons, but it's not like he has some Laura jump short or some Kami dive kick. No, instead it's because he had spent all of that time controlling things. And when he finally jumped, Tokido just wasn't ready for it. He didn't get hit either. You know, it didn't lead to much, but establishing that ground control is why that, uh, why that worked. Anyway, we saw the rest of this. I feel like there were just some miscalculations on, on Punko's side. You know, not really knowing how things would play out. But I do really like how Tokido started playing all of a sudden. Much more Ryu style as a Puma. Fireball, heavy for sure. And he just kind of played patiently at the end. No need to make any big wild moves, and it just happened to get the right amount of super. You know, it's, it could have easily gone the other way. Well, I thought he played that well. How many? Oh, is there one more? Yeah, I suppose one more. Yeah, that ground control, man. Yo, he gets what? Look at this fierce. Look at that, look at that! And you can charge it, and it crush counters so much that you get a dashboard crouching fierce, and it's cancelable. Come on. Come on. It's really good defense. Something I always wonder, well I'll talk about this in a sec, I just I want to see what ends up happening. Yeah, good stuff. When you see somebody as high level as Tokido, I wonder if things that are mix-ups for, for me at least, I don't want to speak on everybody's behalf, mix-ups that are mix-ups for me 
aren't as much because they're a little bit slower. Um, so you see him just walking, just crouching. Not worried about the overhead. Like maybe he would have just seen the overhead and stood up. You know, I always wonder about that when I see things that people are just confidently blocking in that kind of way. Might have just been that he had the right call also, but maybe you can see it. And if so, that really, uh, really helps him out, you know? Yeah, it's nice to be able to react to things rather than guess. Ooh! Yep, sick. Oh, Link it? Yes. <laughs> that character has so many buttons, oh my god! What? Why would you do that? But he did! Oh, that's not safe. Yeah, you're... A little too much gusto. Yeah, maybe he was just willing to take the overhead. Maybe he maybe just was willing to do it. I don't know. That's why I'm, I'm not wasn't saying that he for sure was gonna react. I just always wonder if that's the case. So here's Aegis. Yeah, good work. Aegis, please. No. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um. I gotta say, you know, I really like Tokido's Akuma. When you watch Akuma against Zangief, I don't feel like you get to see the full Akuma. I mean, that's why I wanted to watch him versus Zangief, to see what he did, and he did well anyway. But against other characters, you can really see more of the character, I feel. Uh, and he does a really good job with him. You know, I love, I love the spacing. I love the fireball usage. Uh, I feel like he uses fireballs more than he did as Ryu. And that might be... That might be due to just the getting used to the character, because when the game first came out, he used fireballs as Ryu quite a bit more than when the game had evolved for you know over the course of nine months or a year or whatever it was. Uh, by the end of that, he was using, well, he wasn't pressing many buttons at all with Ryu, end of season one. So that might be something he goes through with Akuma as well. But so far, yeah, I, I think that Zangief still beats Akuma. Yeah. I, I don't think that it's a blow-up. You know, when Akuma came out, like, I beat every Akuma. It was... I'm sure every Zangief beat every Akuma. You know, it, that was... Like, a really rough couple of first weeks, I think, for that character uh, against uh, Zangief. But that's how it almost always goes, you know. Even though Zangief, I feel like, is a little bit more built for the long haul in Season 2 and in Street Fighter Five, still, with a new character coming out playing against him not gonna be easy it always that's always to Geef's benefit because Geef like knows how he wants to play like Geef's tools you know there's there's some depth in Zangief but but when you see somebody throw a fireball or jump in you have an option it's Lariat you know that like you just you have your thing I knocked him down okay I'm gonna do SPD or not like it's not rocket science you know uh speaking of somebody who plays Zangief uh whereas Figuring out how to beat those options, that takes more time. That's not day one, you know. That's not, that's oftentimes not month one. Um, so I don't feel that it's going to end up being a blow-up in favor of Geef, but I do still think that Geef has an advantage versus Akuma, yeah. Yeah, um, I think there might be something else that I had on this playlist. I have a little, oh yeah, four out of six. Matches to analyze playlist. Ooh, what do we got? I actually don't remember. Oh yeah, this is Titania versus Sars. I guess. Uh, I don't know. Just came up on my feed, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, just to talk about this matchup a little bit. Uh, hey man. I don't have ad block on, I'm being a nice guy. <laughs> uh, I feel like, uh, hi, like, hi, hi, like Nikali still beats Geef. I thought so in the first one, first season, and, and I still feel the same way. They, they both are basically the same characters in a slightly different game engine, but like basically the same characters. You know, the mid-range game works very, very similarly. I still think that Nikali has the advantage there. When Nikali gets the knockdown, I still feel like he beats Geef. When Geef gets the knockdown, I still feel like he does fine versus Nikali. But, uh, you know, it's it's better for Geef in the sense that he doesn't have to worry about EX DP, or, uh, DP unless it's EX. Uh, you know, so, I mean, it's... 
like basically the same matchup like maybe a little bit better for Geef. probably still loses it that's how i feel but you oh larutus you think this matchup got worse for Geef because you can't lariat his stomps anymore really uh i don't know i guess i don't really feel like as as Geef that i am blocking like stomp pressure that often like i even in season one i didn't feel like i uh, I feel like that's why I lost, you know, was uh, the opponent doing crouching medium kick stomp or whatever. I felt like it was much more about having difficulty navigating the mid-range game and uh, and the fact that Nikali has better mix-ups than most characters. and You know, just, I guess, I guess most worryingly, V-Trigger Nikali, right? That beats everybody. Uh, just that, that speed, it's so so tough to deal with. Yeah, I guess you could absorb stomps, but again, I don't. I, I just don't really feel like that's why I lost to Nikali in season one. I can't speak for every Geef, but that's that's my own feeling. Yeah, still has the anti-air. It's it's you know upper body invincible. Some some DPS now are kind of ass, but he still has one. But well, I like the Geef's movement so far. Has not been predictable with whether he's focusing on ground or not. I, I will say this before watching the rest. That one nice thing is that Geef actually has an anti-air that works against Nikali now. In Season 1, he he really didn't. You know, Larry got beaten easily by Jump Fears. Uh, and then, apart from, from that, if, if as Geef you wanted an anti-air... It had to be with, you know, far stand roundhouse, which is not going to come up very often. Or crouching fears, which was kind of slow. Stand jab is like no damage. Um, and you had to do it early anyway. So now you just do lariat. So that that is better. I will say that. Ooh, yo! You have to see that. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying you got to do it. You got to confirm. That's all. Hey, he is fishing. He's got the line out. Oh, that's it! Well, not literally the round, but like that that was nice. Good good confirm. Oh uh, man, I would have done something as well. I definitely would have done something too. Uh, good stuff. Like I said, I like Sard. I don't know who Sard is, but I like the the movement. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He didn't do EXTP. You gotta do the. You gotta spend the meter nowadays. Yeah. Right. That would have probably been tough news for Zangief in season one. Good tech. Oh, yo, it could all melt. It could all go away. Oh boy. Oh boy. And he can be back there whenever, too. Uh oh. Well, that might not have been a range necessarily. I don't know. Kind of hard to sell. Dang, yeah? Wow. That was just. That was counter hit stomp? Or what? Let me go back here. Yeah, I don't think I knew about that. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, dude, I think you are right, actually. Nikali V Trigger DP, I think, is still invulnerable without meter. I think, I think you're right. You think he tried to V-trigger the stomp? Let's let's go back. Let's check it out. Oh yeah. Well, maybe Lariat. V 
Freeze frame! Ah, well, whatever. It was one of those two. I'm not sure which. Oh, actually, maybe one way to tell is whether he has V meter left. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he spent he spent V trigger. You're right. Yeah, you said to watch the V bar. Yeah, that's for sure. You can go frame by frame with comma and period. Dang. Sick. I will remember that. I mean, he got away, but like I said, I like Sars' movement. I think I think he has good timings for dashes and jumps. That's not easy. Oh man, what was that about? Why would he walk up in V skill there after the after the sweep? Oh man, no cancel. Yeah, you just you have to. That's what, that's what I mean. I feel like uh, Geef, like everybody, Geef against Nikali. When you're when you're waking up, you have. You know, bad options. Yes. Oh, I would have gone for the reset to be... Oh, that sucks. What? Alright, we're gonna have to go back and see this. It's like something I would do, jeez. Okay. Uh... Well, the previous... I think you just screwed up the jump afterwards, right? Just got, like, jump strong. Yeah, alright, alright. This guy secretly me. Look at that. Why? <laughs> this is your fault, Steven. Oh yeah, he had he had already run out of invincibility. He just did it too early. That's too bad. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, we, again, we've been talking a lot about uh, paying attention to both the air and the ground, and how that's not easy to do. But how people at the at the higher level of play you go, the better they are able to do both. Uh, you know, the better they are able to do a whole host of things. But one of them is to keep their eyes simultaneously on the air and the ground. And man, Haitani is one of the best at that. He is he's so good. Like I feel like it's very difficult to get him to not pay attention to anti-air. Sometimes you can jump on him, and Sars has done that, but uh it's it's not easy. I feel like he is so ready so often. Round two. Quite. Uh, oh. oh okay, that was cool. I like that. I like that choice. Oh, dude, I, the read was good, but the spacing was better. Damn, okay. And then he just stops. I mean, I get it, you know, you're worried. But you got it, you got ahead in that. Dang, DP, really? Ugh, dude, he's so fast. He's in there so quickly. And you try to tech, and, and that's it. He's, he's just swinging for the fences at this point. You know, I just feel like Haitani has all the control. He can move forward when he wants to. Oh, okay. Did he back up too much? The plus setup? No. Oh, yeah, sick. Nice. It was good movement. That was that was good stuff from Saras last round. Okay, okay. Oh, dude. <laughs> Same interaction. Actually, this time works for Haitani, just different timing. Oh, dude, his reactions are so good. Like, he would have been ready with the anti-air DP. Okay. 
Oh, the confirm. Oh, please, please. Do it. Do it for me, Sar Sars. Do it for me. Jab, no. Oh, he tried to lariat. Yeah, that would have worked in season one. Don't do the overhead. Oh, he did it! Why? Why would you do the overhead? That makes me mad. <laughs> EX running bear grab. What a butthole of a move. Yeah, at least it does more damage. But look at how it just stops running. I really wish that they would make that a little bit nicer. Because it just... If, if it runs into like where the opponent is, sort of like a vertical sense, if even if they're in the air, then it stops, which is exactly what happened there. But if it just kept going, then it would be nice, but it's not. It's not. I use it a lot. I use I use running bear grab EX a lot, actually. Uh, like it definitely has uses, you know. It's it's not it's not that I think that it's gonna like catch people off guard very often, because it's he throws up his hands and is a big yellow man like running at you. That's not why. It's because if he absorbs something on the ground, he basically always gets the grab. Uh, so if you're playing against somebody very buttonsy, then you can do like whatever, stand short into ex bear grab, and then they press like they're crouching strong, but they get you know trapped. Uh, I use it like that a lot, and I use it against people when I expect view reversals a lot. So I feel like it's it's pretty good, and it does a buttload of damage now. But yeah, it could be could be better. Could be better. <laughs> oh, a drawing tool. That'd be sick. Yeah, I mean, I just gotta, I gotta get, like, stream tech, you know what I mean? I've never had to do it before. I've always just relied on James to do that, uh, for better or for worse. <laughs> nah, James puts in a lot of time. Um, but I, I gotta do that now. Marvel's only ahead by 300 over Pokken. But they have the 6k from that uh, Teespring drive. Yeah. Uh, we'll see, man. We'll see. I don't I don't think that race is over. The KI people are just... They're too... Too quiet. They're too quiet. There's something happening. Yeah, if, if, so... I use, I use the expert grab sometimes uh, because I expect somebody to press a button on wake up. But I guess... More often than that, I will, I'll use it more in neutral situations. Or like tick into it if I expect they're going to press a button afterward. Um, but just as a straight up media, I don't think I use it very often. I think I would rather do something like Crouching Strong. You know, if I... I guess it depends on the setup, right? But uh, I'd, ra I'd rather get a counter hit button. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll see. How much damage does EX Bear do? A lot. I'll look it up for you though. Two two hundred something, two thirty or something. Yeah, two thirty. With two hundred and fifty stun. Yeah, I don't think that Evo thing's over. I really don't. Uh so I wanted to originally also look at it at the uh the injustice stuff but i guess i'm yeah, not gonna have time honest, so that's gonna have to be have excuse, for some man. other time dang bud light has Just put in a ton in. of money you're coming at me a little hot now i'll come at you loud i didn't come here for the music I, uh, I feel like there's some subtext going on there in this conversation you're coming at me a little a little hot now i'll come at you loud yeah i didn't come here for the music yeah there's definitely some subtext going on um so i've been playing injustice a lot uh i really i would love to talk about it right now but i really don't have time i gotta get back to work uh but it's i like a lot of things i like some things about it a lot let me put it like that 
and I like other things about it not as much. Um, but the game is quite a ways out from from release, so I I hope that they'll uh, adjust some of that. Cues <laughs> porno music, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I gotta I gotta skedaddle. I gotta get back to work. But thanks for hanging out for a while and uh, and watching. Um, definitely appreciate it. Uh, one second. It, it has it has a lot of really cool ideas, and and some ideas that uh, I think could be really really cool. You know, but that like in the present condition are uh, are not like quite as I don't know fleshed out as I would like. I guess is maybe a way to put it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll see how it turns out. Uh, but I'll I'll uh, I'll talk about that. I guess like in the morrow. Um, thanks a lot for watching. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, please give me a follow on this channel so that you can check it out when I'm gonna go live. I think that's what it does. But uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, see you next time. Beautiful.